Hey everyone, Dr. Clark here. I want to share with you some really interesting information pulled out of a research paper from earlier this year that looked at the blood work abnormalities of people that have Hashimoto's. I'm going to warn you, there's a lot of statistics in here, but I find them so interesting. I, I had to write them down because there's no way I could remember all of them, but there's a lot of really interesting, very useful, important points for you if you've got Hashimoto's. So this was a, uh, a, a study that was done in March, and they looked at 190 people that had either positive TPO antibodies or positive thyroglobulin antibodies. So just to review, those are the two antibodies that you will get tested for. And if you have elevated number of these antibodies, then you have the Hashimoto's process going on. Now, you have to also have a TSH that is abnormally high before you're going to get diagnosed with actual hypothyroidism. So these are people that have the positive antibodies. Check this out. This is a great example of all the different ways that an autoimmune problem like Hashimoto's can totally negatively affect many different body systems. Th this, is why I t this, this study is a great example of why I tell people that an autoimmune condition is like an octopus with 50 legs. It's got its hands and its tentacles in so many different parts and corners of your biochemistry that having Hashimoto's and taking Synthroid or Levothyroxine that is the least of your worries. There are so many other things that the cytokines and the autoimmune process causes. And here's just a list. So out of 190 people, they found that 16% of them were hemoglobin deficient. Now they define that as less than uh, 12. 14% were iron deficient, and that was a, a level of less than 60. Now this is a side note. We don't use serum iron to tell if someone's iron deficient. We look at ferritin, but anyway, that's how they defined it. 6% uh, were B12 deficient. Only 1% were folic acid deficient. So this is what happens. Here's the effect on you if you've got Hashimoto's. You've got Hashimoto's and you've got low hemoglobin. That means you're going to have fatigue on top of the fatigue that can be caused by not making enough thyroid hormones or the fatigue caused by having a thyroid hormone receptor problem. This is why on all patients, all patients that I see, we run blood work and we find out what else is going on. Because you could have this hemoglobin thing going on and if we didn't test you for it, we wouldn't know. And so the treatment you might get would be totally ineffective unless you knew that you were low in hemoglobin. Another set of, uh, of, uh, of statistics which I think are really fascinating. 13% of these people had high homocysteine. Now homocysteine is something that you make, normally you recycle it and it's not a big deal, but if you don't recycle it and it piles up, it's very inflammatory and it's terrible for your cardiovascular system, it's very bad for your brain, it increases cognitive aging, and it also affects your thyroid hormone receptors such that they don't work very well and so that you might feel hypothyroid. The next thing they found is 28% of these people had, excuse me, 25% of these people had gastric parietal cell antibodies. This is a great example of the fact that when you've got one autoimmune condition, it's very easy to get another autoimmune condition. Gastric parietal cells are in your stomach and they make uh, stomach acid and they also make this stuff called uh, intrinsic factor. Now, intrinsic factor is what you need to make B12, uh, what you need to absorb B12. Bottom line is, when you have parietal cell antibodies, you can end up with very, very bad stomach burning that doesn't go away. You can end up with problems absorbing B12. You can end up with what's called atrophic gastritis. It can really just screw up your digestion. So this is a good example of when you've got one autoimmune condition, if you don't do the right things, and sometimes even if you do do the right things, the autoimmune problem can expand and start to attack other tissues because once you've got one autoimmune condition, your whole body is on the menu. In this study, this, was, uh, this is what they found. Now here's the last couple bits of information about the TS TSH levels. I think this is really, really important as well, especially if you haven't been diagnosed yet. They found that only, they found 4% of them had low TSH. So 4% of these people had low TSH and they're defined that as less than 0.1. So that means maybe the person was in a hyperthyroid flare-up when they got tested. And people with Hashimoto's can go back and forth between hypo and hyper. And it's a classic sign of having Hashimoto's. 85% of these people with positive antibodies had normal TSH levels. They're called euthyroid, which means if they were to go into their doctor and not have the antibodies tested, they would just get their TSH and the doctor would say, well, you're fine. But as we know, and you can look for the other videos I've made on this, all you need is to have the antibodies to start feeling bad. Your TSH does not have to be abnormal for you to feel terrible. And this study actually confirms that, I think. Last thing is only 10% of these people, only 10% of 190 people with 
for sure antibodies had high TSH, which is what would get you diagnosed hypothyroid and get you on replacement medication. So only about 14% of these people with the Hashimoto's antibodies actually had abnormal TSH levels. So what's the takeaway from this? The takeaway is antibody testing is very important. You need to make sure you've got it done. 85% of people with, Hashimoto, with hypothyroid actually have Hashimoto's. But that's just the beginning. Then you've got to start working with someone who understands that Hashimoto's can cause iron problems and B12 problems and homocysteine problems and gastric parietal cell problems. It's not just as simple as taking levothyroxine and Synthroid. It's very important. And it's about 10% of the solution, but you've got to find someone who understands all these topics that can be the detective and knows how to manage the autoimmune problem, get you feeling good, and not simply say, oh, well, hey, you know, we're going to put you on some iodine and we're going to get you some vitamin D. It's way more complicated than that. And this is a good example how having Hashimoto's is like having an octopus on your back, and you've got to find someone that understands that.